Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, music fans. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, today's one of those days. I uh, generally do geopolitical topics, as we all know, but I occasionally do music videos, and this is one, and unfortunately for the same reason. Uh, today it's to mark the passing of Johnny Winter, a blues rock guitar legend at the age of 70. And he died the way uh, he probably would have liked to. He's been on the road touring, died in a hotel room, uh, seems inevitable for Johnny Winter. Um, his health hasn't been that good over the last few years, and he sort of he's had a history of substance abuse. So it was uh, something we've kind of been waiting for, uh, but unfortunate that it's here. So he was born in Mississippi in 1944, moved to Texas, uh, was uh, very dominant in the local scene, produced a lot of uh, local records, and uh, then in uh, I think 1969. Um, he was discovered, 68, 69, signed to Columbia Records, and uh, managed to do some uh, very memorable shows at uh, Montreux and Phil Maurice, and even played uh, Woodstock. And uh, this gave mass exposure very quickly. And uh, I'll try and attach the uh, performance uh, at Woodstock below, along with some other memorable performances. So uh, his first two records were uh, fairly progressive and forward-looking for blues records, but were essentially blues uh, records with rock and a, a certain amount of adventurism, but uh, by the time he got to his third record, he uh, went all into rock and roll, and this uh, kind of established him more, and a lot of people are more familiar uh, with some of his rock work, and uh, he, he formed a band called Johnny Winter Ann, and uh, interestingly, uh, they were the McCoys, who everyone probably remembers from the huge hit called Hang On Sloopy, and they stuck around, uh, became a more of a progressive psychedelic band. Uh, most people uh, weren't aware of them in their later years, and uh, they became Johnny Winter's uh, backup band, including Rick Derringer. And uh, just on the evidence of that one studio record, they conceivably could be one of uh, America's all-time greatest bands. It's just a, an overall uh, classic a rock record with all the right moves and great material and includes uh, Johnny Winter's uh, uh, unique Catterwall and uh, they, there's also two uh, two live records uh, by Johnny Winter uh, and band and uh, those certainly have gone a long way in establishes, establishing Johnny Winter's fame over the year with uh, incredibly frenetic versions of Good Morning Little School Girl and the uh, Rick Derringer classic rock and roll Hoochie Coo and that's Kind of where uh, Johnny Winter's uh, uh, name was made, and uh, for several years after that, he made more uh, pop, blues, rock records, and uh, toured, and was on, on all the regular uh, rock TV shows, and uh, was quite the big star, and uh, very memorable performances. Then, in, uh, I think it was around '76, '77, uh, he began working with uh, his idol Muddy Waters and produced a, a string of uh, albums for Muddy Waters that not only were some of the most notable records of Muddy Waters' career, but uh, Johnny Winter's playing and contributions and productions. It was just a, uh, a very exciting uh, experience, and they're some of the finest blues records ever made. And this inspired uh, Johnny Winter to uh, return to the blues himself, and the records he made after the Muddy Waters collaboration were uh, all very... Uh, traditional blues. And over the years he has he's continued to put out records uh, meshing um, blues and rock and uh, playing with different tones and styles. Always noted for his uh, uh, exemplary slide playing. But uh, what an incredible guitar player. Very distinct phrasing. Uh, incredible uh, blues knowledge and blues licks. Uh, mining all sorts of traditions although basically known for being Chicago style blues. And, uh, and then, of course, his uh, uh, over-the-top performances and his appearance being an albino, uh, which makes his uh, uh, musical abilities all the more uh, staggering, considering that he's legally blind as an albino. And uh, he had a lot of substance abuse problems, unfortunately, and uh, this uh, dogged him um, through different points in his life. In fact, um, after Johnny Winter and he uh, went into rehab in 1972, and uh, when he uh, came back out of rehab, all of his friends were there, including Mick Jagger and Keith Richards and, and a lot of other luminaries, and they all 
uh, pitched in together to help him create an album called Still Alive and Well, 1973, and it's still one of his finest records, if, if not his finest. I'm sure people will debate that point. But that's a, after that is when he made the string of blues rock albums, and uh, then the Muddy Waters collaboration, and then continued playing and, and, and recording and touring all these years. And uh, he's also noted for collaborations with uh, John Lee Hooker and some of his other idols, and uh, also uh, uh, jammed with Hendrix, a uh, notable collaboration. Only a couple of things, including an extended version of Things I Used to Do. And uh, uh, the juxtaposition worked pretty well, and, and Johnny and uh, Jimi Hendrix liked each other very much. But uh, anyway, this this is about Johnny Winter, and uh, that this day has come. Johnny Winter has passed, and truly, truly a giant on the guitar, truly, truly a giant in blues, and truly, truly a giant in rock, and he will be missed. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.